Topic four, as always, brought to you by the Kind of Funny forums. Go to kindoffunny.com slash gamescast topic to leave your questions, and we'll get to them at some point, just like we're doing right now with a Morton Joe. He says, amigos. Read the whole thing. How are you? My question, my question is simple. We talk all the time about games that make us sad, happy, laugh, or cry, but have you ever played a game or came across something game in a game that has offended you? Don't think so. Mm. That That's offended, offended me? Yeah. Oh, definitely. Like what? All of GTA 5. Really? Really? Listen, I'm in a camp that I don't play GTA anymore. The one GTA that I went all in on was Vice City, but now I just like, I started it and I had to stop because I just, I couldn't deal. It's just not, it's just not for me. It's just like, I get that a lot of video games have violence. I play violent games myself, but like the way the GTA handles it, I just, I just don't like. Just don't like it. Huh? So it's the violence of it. Like what? Yeah. Like Trevor when he's hitting No, the people? idea that like you're reward like that you're rewarded for, you know, like oh, essentially actions. like murdering women in the game. I mean you murder guys in the game too, to be fair. I'm not trying to be sexist. The internet will explode if I don't recognize that you also murder men in that game. <laughs> um but for me I just like I don't know, I just don't just just don't like it. Okay. Why you call? Okay. I don't really get offended by Fiction, I guess, but things that are thought provoking uh, to me. I thought I still think Spec Ops is a great example mm-hmm. of uh, um, you're killing American soldiers. Um, not to say that their lives are any more or less valuable than anyone else, but it's just not a perspective that we have a lot. In, and so when you hear them chattering to each other, speaking American English to each other, and you're just lighting them up, um, it's a, just a different perspective that was thought provoking. I don't think I was offended by it, but I was like, huh, I've never killed uh, mm. American soldiers in a game really before. I've killed Nazis and, you know, other people as you know like, like faceless soldier yeah. guy but not dudes like talking to each other in a hallway about like their family or whatever and going home and you're just capping them in the back of the head you know um it was certainly an interesting perspective i assume it's a similar thing that people in other countries playing games where you're killing you know you know like i'm not saying you know like if you're a german and you're playing a world war ii shooter not that you're a nazi obviously you aren't but you are killing people that you know are maybe somehow related to you speaking your language you can understand them you know like that was a that that came to mind instantly when you said that was you know I wasn't offended by it at all I love that they did that, um, but yeah that was certainly a thought provoking and unique experience. Correct. Yeah, I've been offended lots of times. Um, going home, Firewatch, Metal Gear Solid Five, the uh, Ground Zeroes. Where are the fucking platinum trophies? Like <laughs> it's an insult. <laughs> It's offensive and it's a goddamn insult that these fucking games don't have platinums mm-hmm. and then get the fuck out of here with this shit. My Steve God. Steve Gaynor. You're out of control with the Gone yeah, Home Yeah, you platinum. really are. How can you Gone Home? I, Gone Home doesn't deserve a platinum. I love platinum. Taco trophies. Master. I have a bajillion platinum. Did Taco Master. Yeah, Taco Master Pro shouldn't have had one. But They're- it did, which means the scale's <laughs> broken, which means Gone Home, which is more of a game, a better game than Taco Master deserves it. Well, it was a better this game than Taco Master. This isn't about, you know, Fixing the system. It's about honoring great games, games that deserve platinums with platinums. That is the that is what a real game has a platinum trophy. I'm not. It's not that I'm even mad at Steve Gainer. I'm disappointed in him. My God, Greg, you're a monster, and I appreciate that. Bez eighty seven <laughs> has a really long question that I'm just going to oh, kind of boil dear down. God. Here. Hello, best friends. My question is: When are we going to see the death of in-game loading? I feel like in this day and age, loading shouldn't be an issue anymore. But playing Bloodborne. There's a lot of loading. Oh, GTA got it's it right by loading the game at the start, but then there's still a lot more. Blah, blah, blah. When's loading going away? Never. Never. Yeah. That's just how games work. Yeah, right? it's, it's not going to go away, but it will It will get better, and, and the games are doing it and optimizing it in different ways. I think The Division is a great example of a game that, that doesn't typically load. It takes a long time to get into the game and then load the game, but the game does run pretty seamlessly when you're going in and out of buildings and in and out of quests and stuff like it that. It does a really good job, right, yeah. when you go into your HQ, that like that when you suddenly can't run anymore and like your friends disappear, that's because you're go- it's loading your instance, right. your hub world, and then right. back out to the The only public. game that stands out to me as the one game I recognize as never seen a loading screen is God of War. Mm. Like, that's it. Yeah. And again, it's because they hide them really yeah, they well. Do, it's you're cutting right. through the yeah. no, rocks right. exactly. Well, that's what we're talking about, right? Not right, like those... Right. Epic Skyrim loading screens that or the you spend the whole time playing, oh. right? Yeah. So I think, like, yeah, it's a simple question. It's the thing about it way. is, like, is you know, load exists because of how big the game is, right, and how competent the machine is. But when when the machine gets better, the games get bigger. Yep. That's the whole thing. You're not gonna ever see it go away because they're always gonna be chasing each other. 
Yeah. Yeah, I think it's just about hiding it properly and and not, you know, like Bloodborne's a great example. I know that they patched it and made it better, but when Bloodborne came out, the load times in Bloodborne were fucking yeah. absurd. Like it wasn't even long or like I was like you could literally go take a shower like during these load times. And this is a game where you're supposed to die hundreds of times and I'm sitting here for bad. minutes and minutes at a time like waiting I was like, how did you ship the game like this? Yeah. A game like that was really a, for what I thought was a, a pretty great game. I, I was like, that's insane. I mean, I couldn't believe the load times in that. So Something, it is unimmersive. Um, Rise of the Tomb Raider did really well. Their loads were quick. If you died, you instantly were right back in it. Mm -hmm. So back in the day, like before CD games, like all the cart based mm -hmm. stuff, there was no loading at all, right? Was nope. there any cart game that had loading? No. Not that's that I can think of. Yeah, but we're never going back there. Unless Nintendo brings it back with the NX. Um, X gonna give it to you. Next question <laughs> comes from AP Newman. If console exclusives went to PC, how do you think it would affect console hardware sa sales? And is there a loss of sale overall? You're going to find out with Xbox One. Yeah, we're seeing the, it um, I still think these audience... There's a Venn diagram overlap of these audiences, but I do think that... Um, it would. Uh, it's obviously going to erode sales. I'm. I think Xbox One is going to be the the litmus test now with uh, with Quantum Break, which wasn't going to sell very well to begin with. But you're you know, <coughs> not because it's bad. Not because it's bad. Because it's it's all. It's just not going to sell very well. It's the same thing with like Sunset. It's just like a weird idea. Yeah, and it's just not. You know, it's not Halo or Gears or whatever. So it's not like I don't. I, I don't know that they have a lot of expectations for it. But will the the proof will be in the pudding with that uh, soon because they're certainly taking a different um, mark than PlayStation, which still hasn't put a first party Sony published game uh, on PC. They put second party Sony published games on PC, but none of the first party. So until that until that happens, until you see an Uncharted or a God of War or a Bloodborne or something like that, on, and we're not going to know. We're not going to have like an apples to apples comparison between the consoles. But I, I, my assumption is it's not going to affect it as much as people think. Yeah, I don't think it's going to affect it at all. But it is important to note that you know, uh, Tomb Raider, uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider sold way, way, way better on PC. So. Um, it could just say that that game's audience is there already, or that that game's audience knew that it was coming on PC and waited. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll be interested to see the quantum break numbers. Clintimus says, hey guys, I have a question about YouTube and creating content around games. I know you've covered this subject before on the Game Over Greggy show, but I was hoping that you might go into more detail, specifically when it comes to making content for YouTube centered around video games. I have high quality videos on my channel of me let's playing games. They hardly get any views. I spend a lot of time in the description, title tags, etc. I just don't see any results. I thought this was interesting with you here. How do you how do we make content around video games for other people? The first step, if you're on YouTube, is to read the creator playbook. Mm -hmm. Amen. First step, number one. Just Google Creator Playbook and read it front to back. I don't think it's just YouTube.com slash playbook. Yeah, yeah, don't skip any sections. Like, in make sure you're doing all of the best practices that they outline there. That's step number one. Mm -hmm. Step number two is making a niche audience. Right now, it's too difficult to do everything. You have to pick something and stick with it and be the best at that one thing. Mm -hmm. There's just way too much saturation with people trying to be like, I'm going to do a generic gaming channel. It's like it's you and a million other people doing that. So yep. pick like your favorite thing, the thing that you can spend the most amount of time with and won't get sick of and you love, whether it be Minecraft or Call of Duty or, you know, Destiny or whatever your game of choice is, pick it and stick with it and don't deviate. I think, you know, even going beyond that, and it's not just games, too, because I think a lot of people get hung up on like, all right, it's Minecraft or it's Destiny or whatever. I think that one thing could be video game news. Or video game reviews. Like you could do everything if reviews are what you're focusing on or if a news product is what you're doing. Like you look at like the Daily Fix at IGN or like they're just news shows and stuff. That I think would be is great if you're into that side of it. If you're into the more just like reporting side and that's what you want to do. I think that's a great thing that not enough people on just like the the starting out level are doing. I think a lot of people jump into the Let's Plays and stuff. Yeah. And I think that's such a... A, the deep end of the pool, and there's so many people swimming there already. Specialized in stuff. I mean, they, they, what you're talking about right now, PS4 trophies, right? When a new game drops and I'm having trouble or I want to know how to get this, I immediately go to that because I know that's what he does. He yeah. puts those videos up and they're there. And then it's the same thing with what you're saying is, yeah, specialize in something. I mean, we've mentioned Brick and Choir and Toys for Games today, right? Because we're talking about LEGO Dimensions and they talk about that and then they collaborated with me. So do something unique, specialize in something and collaborate with people, right? Because then you get into the lexicon and their audience and all these different things mm -hmm. and obviously be genuine i think that's the most important yeah. thing like no matter what you're doing is be true to your voice and what you believe in what you actually like like i love nintendo so i'm st i'm going to bring up nintendo forever even if colin you know fights me but it's like that's that's the fun of it you know and like that's kind of the whole point people come to us because they know that we're gonna we're gonna do that and you guys with playstation and all the, the other things oh, that yeah. you love so it's like and the games uh, toys to life stuff you know like you're gonna talk about lego dimensions even if no one else is even if let's plays don't get views you're gonna keep doing them because that's what you want 
and you confuse Kevin. Don't worry. You know, you know what I mean. <laughs> he yeah. is not worried. Kevin looks he half looks asleep. Worried. <laughs> he looks he, like he got clipped a, by a he's truck. He's in a full-on just... sugar crash right now. <laughs> Do you need to go get more candy to keep going? We're almost yeah, go, done. Go get some candy. Kev. Bring the jelly beans in. <laughs> so did you, oh, they're here. <laughs> God damn it, Kevin. I love that guy. All right. Oh, and there he goes dropping the beans. Final final question of the day, Colin. This one, this one's for you. I, I was curious know. as to why pixel art in games is so expensive and difficult to use. I've looked online and haven't really been able to find a thorough explanation as to exactly why this is. Having played Super Mario World in Pixel Perfect mode on the new Nintendo 3DS, I've kind of appreciate the beauty of the game even more now than I did when it originally came out. That was from Popcorn Shower. Wait, well, you mean like like buying the art assets? No, like making them. Like it's way more expensive to make pixel art than it so is like to Street make Fighter like a 5. model. And we're always right? talking about Ego. 3D. Yeah, Egovania and stuff. Yeah, like Egovania is even 2.5D. So the the I so there's multiple reasons why. A like if you look at a game like Castlevania Symphony of the Night, which I think is one of the most beautiful games of all time, like easily. Um, these are so these these enemies or these characters. So you know Alucard, for instance, or Dracula are animated. Uh, frame by frame with pixel art, so it's it you have to like hand you have to do this by hand basically um, And uh, it's super expensive the other thing that Iga was saying to me Which is interesting when you know because we I've talked to Iga many times about uh, bloodstain, which I'm super excited about um, Is that there's just not that many people anymore that can do it and do it well So I like, do it up to that level because there's a lot of like pixel art 8-bit or 16-bit inspired or even 32-bit inspired games out there that do pixel art not very well Um so he was saying to me that like that one of the big problems and why Bloodstain is 2.5D and why Mighty Number no. 9 is 2.5D, which is not an Ega game, but similar reason is that it's just really expensive because you have to find people that can do it properly and it's a dying art. Um, and so these people can demand money and time and it takes a lot of time and it might not be worth it. I'm super disappointed that Bloodstain and Mighty Number no. 9 are both 2.5D, but if they do that because it is just cheaper to make a model that you can then program to animate um, without having to do it literally frame by frame. So um that's kind of a nutshell kind of reason why, but it's it's even more complicated than that. Yeah. Because it's hard. Yeah. But it's hard beautiful. It takes a lot of work. It's it beautiful. beautiful. It's yeah. my favorite thing. This episode is brought to you by Loot Crate. Loot Crate is a monthly subscription box service for epic geek and gamer items and pop culture gear. For less than $20 a month, you can get four to eight items that include licensed gear, apparel, collectibles, unique one-of-a-kind items, and more. Make sure to head to LootCrate.com slash KFGames and enter code KFGames to save $3 on any new subscription. Loot Crate is more than just a subscription service. It's an entire community of fans that share their experience and interact with each other around the unboxing of each month's crate. And they guarantee over $40 in value each and every crate. Sometimes it's a lot more. Every month there is a different theme and all items are curated around that theme. There's been, you know, themes for Zelda and Star Wars. There's the villains one with the with the Versus. No, versus. Yeah, no. Mirror, mirror. Bearded Spock versus regular Spock. <laughs> <Bearded> Spock. <laughs> April's theme is Quest. We're forming a party to explore everywhere from far off kingdoms to worlds hidden within worlds with exclusive items from Labyrinth. Awesome. Oh, yeah. Harry Potter, History Channels, Vikings, and Uncharted 4. <laughs> and of course, we've got our t-shirt and loot pin to help equip you for your adventures. Remember, you only have until the 19th at 9 p.m. Pacific to subscribe and receive that month's crate. And when the cutoff happens, that's it, Jack. It's over. So go to lootcrate.com slash kfgames and enter code kfgames to save $3 on your new subscription. I missed today. the Mass Effect exclusive uh, the, Yeah, the, the, crate, the Super Crate. And I like had a full on like meltdown. I was like, no! <laughs> <laughs> was Christine so had me sad. hitting up like contacts at Loot Crate for that and stuff. And then, uh, but I, and then every day she'd ask me if they'd send you. I'm like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to bug these people that I barely know. <laughs> I would. You should too. Lootcrate.com slash kfgames. Um, speaking of loot, are we going to open the swag bag now, or are you guys going to wait and do that later? Oh, we can do it now. Sure. It could be Let's fun. do that. Let's do that. So, Andrew and Renee moved, and now she has all this video game stuff she doesn't want. No. <laughs> Hold on. Which is like that's our entire house That's as well. only part of the story. So, I have a lot of stuff that's unopened, stuff mm. that I've gotten from conventions, stuff that, you know, publishers sure. have been kind enough to send to me, and I haven't really had a place to put it, and now that I have a new studio, I realize I just don't have room for this all, and uh -huh. I... And instead of just randomly, you know, giving it away, I thought I'd bring it to you guys and we could see if, you know, the kind of funny friends wanted to maybe well, win some stuff. Of course, we'll on Colin and Greg that. Live, twitch.tv slash kind of funny games, each and every day, we add something to the pro Friday prize box and then give it away on Friday. Yeah. And you know, there's no, pr no subscription necessary, though it helps. So here's a hint at what you might be winning from the swag bag. This one's already. It literally says swag bag. I'm giving, <laughs> this one's getting a given away on Friday, so it's not even worth putting in the video. So that's the whole thing? Yeah. I, 
That's just I want to put everything there's we've a, put so far into this bag. and a sweatshirt inside that bag. Oh, okay. So LA Cops. Oh, wait, what was it? Was that game LA it Cops? It was a great indie game, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we did a Let's Play on it a long mm-hmm. time ago. That was awesome. All right, we got... What do you got, Santa? That's a Call 1080p Duty Call of Duty camera. Well, we'll probably take that. A 1080p camera? Yeah, you might want to keep it. Kevin loves this camera. Came, this came that. with like this came games. with the hardened edition of Call, Call of oh, Duty Ghosts, gotcha, and I've never gotcha. used it. We got Uncharted, the Nathan Drake collection on the PlayStation Four. <laughs> oh God! That is <laughs> some Assassin's Creed. That is the Hidden Blade. Oh, Hidden Blade. It out. Not that well. I mean, it pops. It does out. have a crossbow. No, yeah. Out. Okay, my apologies. Kevin knows more. Oh, a PlayStation a cover. That is, PS- uh, that is a custom Street Fighter V PS4 face plate. I'm not going to show you it. I'll show it. It's you beautiful. just hand it over. Don't worry. All right? <laughs> we're not going to annoy you. Dude. No, we're just showing it. We're letting people know we're what's still in there. We got so the that t-shirt is, that she's wearing. That is Whoa! the men's version of the t-shirt I'm wearing with uh, Batmax or Bayman. Your choice. I Let's don't go know. with Bayman. I'm going with Bayman. <laughs> we got the Street Fighter V designer collection book. The Walking Dead complete first season yeah. plus 400 days on PS4. Season 2. Yeah. I thought this was all going to be garbage. There's good stuff in here. Mm-hmm. Battlefront on PS4. There's a lot of big stuff in here. There's like bags. You don't have to show bags. it all if you want. There's some fun toys inside that Witcher up. bag. We got... So this is actually a large, but it's a ladies' tee because I know you oh, have nice. ladies fans as well. Dungeons and, and Dragons. And like me, I always have trouble getting good gaming Dungeons ladies Dragons. stuff. Sure. So... A CD. Sounds Creed Unity soundtrack. And then other stuff okay. that we will reveal at a later Is there day. anything I want in anything? You got some... Should I dig through it on no, my own? There's no bullshit in here. Hey! <laughs> whoa! 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 Hey! <laughs> Until next week, make sure that you check us out over on Fallen Fantasy XV Uncovered.com. <laughs> Unless this is Thursday or Friday, because then it's over. Yeah, but uh, we're going to be streaming Wednesday, March 30th. Watch me, me and Greg do stuff. Be nice in the chat. I'm sure a lot of people are going to be really, really, really mean to us. So no, they'll be just fine. show up and say hi. And um, until next time, Andrea, thank you so much for being amazing and joining us. Thanks for having thrice. me, guys. Thank and thanks you. for letting me talk about myself for like 20 minutes. Oh, yeah. No, <laughs> I love it. It's great. Till next time. I love you.